Hi, and welcome to another edition of Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In this video, we're going to be looking at a bunch of pictures I shot recently at a high school soccer game using the Nikon Z8. It was actually my first sports photography experience with the Z8. I've shot a lot of um, wildlife type stuff, well, mostly birds. But so in this video, I want to talk a little bit about sports photography, my experience with sports sports photography in general and specifically this soccer game and uh, the settings I used on the Z8 and my approach. I shot a lot of sports, mostly high school but some college and professional sports when I worked for a weekly newspaper in Philadelphia, in South Philadelphia. And the one I had the most trouble with, the sport that I had the most difficulty with was soccer. I guess because the field is so big and the action moves back and forth so quickly. And uh, so I was anxious to see how well the Z8 would do with this type of photography. So I used the 70 to 200 2.8 zoom with the two time teleconverter converter that gave me an equivalent focal range of 140 millimeters to 400. Uh, I had the camera, had the lens actually on a monopod and shot in shutter priority with matrix metering. My shutter was set at 1 1600th of a second. My ISO was mostly 800 and my apertures varied depending on uh, light, of course. It was a sunny day, but you know sometimes I'd be in shadow. So my aperture varied from 7.1 to 11. I would say the average aperture was, was at f8. I had the camera set for wide C1 custom um, area with face and eye recognition. I had it set for continuous low at 10 frames a second and use standard picture control. I tried to keep the focus box on the action, obviously, on a specific player. And uh, it worked out really good. You know, occasionally, if someone would come in front of the player I was focusing on, that I had the focus box on, um, and it would lose focus. Sometimes I had it on the background, but for the most part, I got a very high percentage of in-focus pictures. And for soccer, I think a zoom really comes in handy. Now, I was positioned at one end of the field alongside the goal, and as the action came towards me, I could zoom out to take in all the action. When the play was down the field or coming towards me at a distance, I could zoom to 400. So um, it really came in handy. Now, I think this worked out good, the 7200 with the two-time converter. But ideally, I think the 100 to 400 would be perfect for, for soccer. Uh, 7200 is sharp with the converter but I'm sure the 100 to 400 would be even better and the focus would be even faster. So I think that would be the ideal lens for, for soccer. Now, with other sports, with football, you could kind of follow along with the action. You stay ahead of the action, move down the field. Soccer, you know, one second they're at one end and two seconds later, they're at the other end. So it happens very quickly. And I think positioning yourself, uh, just pick a spot. Pick a spot uh, where most of the action is. And of course, that's going to be uh, at the goal. Of course, you also have to take in consideration the light. Now, the sun, it was, this, was, uh, this game started about 3.15. And the sun was behind and to my left. So I tried to position myself so I wasn't shooting into the sun, of course. And I think it worked out good. There was, you know, it's a contrasty situation, but the matrix metering handled it well. I shot in raw, and uh, one of the teams 
as you can see, had white jerseys. So some of them were a little blown out, not much. And I just corrected that in the raw conversion. So overall, I think that I think it worked out really well. And I think these are the best soccer pictures I ever got. I mean, I haven't shot soccer in over 20 years. I think it's like 20, 23 years. And I never got this high a percentage of in-focus pictures. And I was using autofocus back then. I think it was probably last time I shot soccer, I was probably shooting with a Nikon F4. And I was never very pleased with the autofocus uh, for action, continuous autofocus with the F4. And of course, today's mirrorless cameras and even DSLRs are superior to the autofocus cameras from the 90s into the 2000s. And I, uh, you know, it's just amazing how much better they are. Now, I mostly shot horizontal. Now you will see quite a few vertical pictures here, but uh, they were cropped in Lightroom. So that's a nice advantage to having a high megapixel camera. And the Z8 is 45 megapixels. You can easily crop from horizontal to vertical and the images still look good. And some I even cropped a lot more than that. Some even some of these horizontal shots, some of the action that was down the field a little bit, I really cropped in quite a bit and uh, was very pleased with the results. Now, like I said, I haven't shot soccer in over 20 years and I was out of practice a bit, but I, th I think the reason I got what I consider some good shots was more the camera than me. I just basically tried to follow the action and the camera did the rest. So um, I'm going to be trying more sports with, with the Z8. I'll be shooting a football game in a few weeks. Really looking forward to that. And I hope to be shooting some high school basketball as well. And we'll see how it does. But it's a great camera for action. It was great for birds in flight and in uh, I was pleased with that, and I, I've done that in the past, but I'm not a wildlife photographer. I'm not real experienced at that, but again, the camera made me look better. Now, for most types of photography, the person behind the camera is more important than the camera. A good photographer can get good pictures with just about any type of camera, even a cell phone. For sports, however, while the photographer, of course, is important, a good camera, a good high frame rate, great autofocus makes sports photography much easier. You're not going to get great sports images with a cell phone. Now, in my next video, I'll be doing a report on the Nikon FM, which was Nikon's first compact camera back in 1977. I'll be going over all the features and controls and how it all works on the Nikon FM. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So I will talk to you then.